rocking me. It, it, it's really, really rocking me in a way that is deeply life-changing. You know, I know people say all the time, you know, that changed my life, that changed my life. But I'm talking about really, really, really um, life-changing from a very deep place. I was looking at the scripture, and I want to go and read it in Matthew, the 26th chapter, and the 38th verse is where I'm starting. The 26th chapter, no, it's, it's solid gray. It's not this color. It's solid. You can't see through it. It's that size, but you can't see through it. Um, I wanted to go back and look at this scripture again because I want to talk about the sensitivity that's in the will of God. I want to talk about sensitivity today. Really, really, really strong. And it, it's really been sitting on me very hard for the last more than 24 hours now. And that is the reason why I'm on this page. You know, I'm, I'm on this page today, um, not because it's convenient, but I'm on this page today because I'm, I'm sensitive. I'm sensitive to, to where we are in this journey as it relates to what it is we're doing. I'm on this page because somebody needs me to be on this page. And when it comes down to sensitivity, there would be times when you would be called upon to operate in the will of God and it would not be convenient. It would not be convenient at all. Um, it wouldn't be something that you have the ability to do and it's something that you now are in a position to do, which means the level of sacrifice that you would have to go through in order to meet the sensitivity of the will of God and the ways of God would be beyond normal. It would be beyond average. And um, if we're already people that are used to, come on, Glenda, if we're already people that are used to operating um, within certain walls and, 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 and certain conditions, then we would never be people that know how to make that escape process to the supernatural because we're already stuck in a box. We're already stuck in a way that we think something should happen. And um, when it doesn't happen that way, many of us lose it because we, we, we think consistency, um, consistency in something is, um, is um, repetition in its fashion, in its fashion. I know I have to laugh at myself because when I, when I got past 50, I would go in restaurants and sit down and um, I would eat and have a wonderful moment. And I'll leave that restaurant. The next time I come back, I would be like, is that section right there open? And they would say, yeah, it is. So I'll go back over there and sit down. And I'll leave out, come back another day. Somebody sit in the section, I will wait until that section is done. And so I started asking myself, you know, am I getting all crazy? But it's like after you get to be a certain age, it's like you don't like a lot of changes. You just want everything just to stay. Every time I come to this restaurant, this is where I sit. Every time I ride in, in the car, I sit on this side. Every time I, and the minute God requires us to do something that upsets that pattern, and it doesn't put you in a position to do it the way you always do it, then we think that that's opportunity for us not to be obedient. When there is no way that you can prove obedience until you've been inconvenienced. There is no way that you can prove obedience to God until you are doing something that you absolutely don't want to do and something that you feel that it's uncomfortable. 
I mean, I got all kinds of stuff stacked up here so I can prop the phone up and turn the phone on and the laptop is on my lap and, you know, and she driving and I'm being tossed and she got to go in suitcases and all of that. But the point of the matter is the conditions may not be as I would desire, but the will of God for what he has called me to do is what he desires. How many people just got what I said? It's what he desires. I'm doing what the Lord desired. I'm, I'm doing the will and the desire of that other person. Of the other person that, that I asked him to come into my life. And now I possess the heart of God. The heart of Christ. And so with him living in my heart then there would be things that I would do that, that I myself don't recognize. Um, one of my friends on the Facebook page posted um, one of my favorite books, and we're going to go through that book as well, Matters of the Heart. And um, that is my all-time favorite book that I've ever written, Matters of the Heart. And while I was doing this study of Matters of the Heart, um, Make sure you tap that screen and tag somebody and you all know why. You all know why on this page. We, we, we can't be selfish. We, we, we cannot leave people out of a deposit that they greatly need. Um, when I was going through that book and I was doing the research for that book, Matters of the Heart, it said that when a person dies and they give you their heart by way of they becoming a donor and you get their heart. It told a story in the book in my researching about a school teacher who was married, very, very conservative. She was a third grade school teacher and she had a problem with the heart. And she went through this process of looking for a donor. And when they found her a donor, the donor was a was a prostitute who had gotten killed. And um, they put this woman's heart inside of the school teacher's chest. And three months later, the school teacher stopped wearing fishnet stockings and smoking and drinking and, and I mean doing stuff that her husband was like, what is going on? And so they begin to talk about how the heart has a code in it. The heart has a code in it. And whatever a person um, was involved with during the course of their lives, there are actual grooves and indentations on your heart that um, those grooves are there and they're there in a very deep way because now that heart has a code and there's a behavior pattern that's been so repetitive that now it becomes the heart's cold. And so that heart beats with that kind of behavior because that's what it was used to while it lived in somebody else's chest. And so when I begin to do the study on that and then God began to allow me to see that when people have my heart, what I have done as God and as the heart of God, I've done it so many times I've been so repetitive at the way that I do things. He said, I'm God and I change not. I change not. I'm so repetitive in what I do and how I do that anybody that really gets my heart, they will begin to automatically display characteristics of me because I'm God and I change not. And he began to say to me as a person, this wasn't about a preach word. I ran across this by reading an article and then the article sparked more interest and that's how the book was birthed and God called it the matters of the heart. And he began to say to me, the only way that you can tell that you've really been converted and that you really have my heart is that your ways and things that you do and ways that you think there will be automatic triggers. Remember I talked about the prophetic triggers. There will be automatic triggers to certain behaviors 
that you cannot deny. You will find yourself doing things the way God would do it. You will find yourself responding to things the way God would respond to things. When there's a total surrendering to not just the fact that God, I have your heart, but now I want to surrender to the will of that heart. To the will of that heart. So then, Dr. Bynum, what are you talking about? Um, the will of that heart. Now I want to surrender to um, the testament. Like the Bible has the Old and the New Testament. Those are testaments because those people are no longer with us. Those are testaments because they are testimonies of what they went through in order to provide for us a lifestyle and a plan and a regimen to follow if we want to really be bona fide Christians. And so it's a, it's a, it's a will and testament of a life that was once lived so that we can know that the life that we're being asked to live, it's been proven that it is possible. It is proven that, that, that under these conditions, you can still obey God. Even when they're going to boil you in, in oil and they're going to hang you upside down and they're going to behead you. You can still go out declaring and proclaiming the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of the most difficult trials. In the midst of the most difficult moments. Are you hearing me? You should have walked back there. Are you hearing me? So when you look at this whole thing about the heart and the pursuit of the will of God, then Jesus died so that we can get this will. We can get this will. And so the will, in the will, there were certain things left for us. There were certain things willed to us. So that when that time comes, listen to the switch out. So that when that time comes, you will be able to do the will of God. Because that will was left for me. I, is that making sense to you? Is that making sense to you? And so part of, part of the will is about a certain level of sensitivity. Like Jesus was always very sensitive. The Bible said he was on his way someplace else. He had just got through ministering healing to somebody else. Wow, that, you know, I have to pause and say this. You can't help people. You can't minister to people if you have no compassion for anybody. The reason what people pray now and say, you know what? I just really want to be able to lay hands on people. You don't want to lay hands on people and they be healed. You want the, you want the stardom that that brings. You don't, you don't really, you're not really, no, I want to be able to do that. I mean, we, we, we talk about the ministry of, of healing and deliverance like, like, like that's something that you learn to do like paint. Like you learn to ride a bike or something like, oh, you know, if I can just do that. No, it, it's deeper than that. It, 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 it's you being an interceptor. It's you being a, an intercessor. An intercessor is an interceptor. In other words, I jump up in front of your life and I catch the ball. I take on that burden. I take on that physical sickness. I feel it like you feel it. And I'm, listen, I'm praying for you because I'm moved with compassion. I'm compassionate to what you are dealing with. I feel what you are dealing with. What hurts you hurts me. See, that, that, that right there is the heart of Christ. What, what, what hurts you hurts him. He said, I was, I was, I was moved by, 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 by everything at all points. Everything you've ever gone through. Everything you've ever gone to go through. I was moved by this and I feel the infirmities. I feel you. So how can we have the heart of Christ and we don't feel anything? Remember the book of Jude when it says Jude 19, that if you don't have these characteristics, it's because you're devoid of the Holy Spirit. That thing is wearing on me. You're devoid of the Holy Spirit. You do not have the spirit of God. 
That's like somebody putting a heart inside of your chest. It's like the doctor giving you a heart transplant. And you know they have to put it in your heart. And then they have to put it up to a machine. They have to re-jump start the heart. To make sure that the heart is going to function. And they leave it on what they call a pacemaker to make sure that it's going to function properly. And that's really what that three with me is. It's like the Lord has given all of us, 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 me as well as you, a new heart. But at three with me is like that pacemaker. Like I got to keep on, you know, I got to put it on a machine to make sure that it's going to function right. And I can't take it off. I can't shut at three with me down until the heart, until I can see that the heart of Christ is able to function in all of us properly, consistently, without interference, without question. It is operating in a pristine manner and there is no failure in this heart. It is now connected to the new body that it's in. And everything about it understands the body, the eyes, the ears, the mouth, the nose, the way I walk, the way I talk, the way I live. Everybody now understands that we're following this new heart. And until the heart of God takes precedence, it becomes a dominant factor. Then we have to stay right here at a three with me. We have to stay right here. Yeah, uh uh-huh, it's inconvenient. I'm sitting out here in a car, you know? The things that God required me to do. I'm in a car. Let me read to you facts about this. Let me read to you the facts about somebody that just have a heart to do something, but they don't possess the Holy Spirit to do it. And when you don't possess the Holy Spirit to do it, you have no sensitivity to anything that's going on with anybody. For no reason. Not even in your own house. The book of Matthew. The 26th chapter. The book of Matthew. The 26th chapter. Because he even said. When he got down to feeding uh, the 5,000. The Bible said he was moved with compassion. He felt sorry for the people. He said I got to do something about this. I'm moved with compassion. It said in the 38th verse. Listen to this y'all. Please listen to this. It says, then he said to them, and this is Jesus. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Because I want us to get this right. I want us to get this right. It says, and taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John. He began, listen to this. He began to be grieved and greatly distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved so that I am almost dying of sorrow. Stay here and stay awake and keep watch with me. Jesus just said to three disciples, I am so grieved until I feel like my soul is dying. I am deeply grieved. I am in deep grief with sorrow. Stay here and stay awake and keep watch with me. And they went to sleep. Unbelievable. You have watched this man work miracles. This man just sat in the upper room and fed y'all the Lord's supper and said, this is my body. I break it. I give it to you. I give it to you so you can have communion with me always so that you can be one with me. And I'm making a sacrifice to do this. I'm making a sacrifice to give you my body. And I'm telling y'all that I'm grieved. And I'm so deeply grieved until I feel like I'm dying. And nobody in the text said, Jesus, are you all right? What can we do? Can we do anything for you? So he says, stay here and stay awake. Because I got to go. Just keep watch. Watch over me because I'm, 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 I'm grieving. I'm going through something. I'm dealing with something. I'm in deep sorrow. Okay, now I want you to hear this. You know how we say sometimes, I'm so tired I feel like I'm dying. 
but it's like a it's like a a, a, a metaphor for us. It's a metaphor for us. It, well, you know what? Oh, girl, I'm so tired. I feel like I can just die right now. Or I'm I'm so hungry to I can just die. It's a metaphor for us. Do you think Jesus was saying that as a metaphor? Or did you think the Christ really meant that? I feel something dying inside of me. I'm so grieved. And all I need y'all to do is stay woke and pray with me. And they go to sleep. People that's got a heart to follow Christ without the Holy Spirit. No, I just said something right there. I just said something right there. Because, because without the Holy Spirit, without the spirit that goes with this heart, like here's the heart. And so the heart is just laying here. But then here is the spirit of that heart that, 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 that goes with that heart. And if you don't put the spirit, the Holy Spirit with that heart, then you cannot activate it to the will. The spirit of God is the activation of what he is calling us to do. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's why he said it is a spirit of the Lord that make it intercession for us. We don't know what we should pray as we ought, but the spirit of the Lord make it intercession for us. I'm going up here on this mountaintop. I'm going here further to pray for y'all. I'm in deep grief because I know that betrayal is coming. And you go to sleep. I'm saying something right here. And the Bible said, and after going a little farther, he fell face down and prayed. Are y'all hearing this? Man, I can feel this. I can feel this. He fell face down and prayed saying, my father, if it is possible, that is consistent with your will. Let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came, listen, and he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And the Bible said he did this three times. He came back three times. And by the time he got back the third time and they jumped up trying to say something, he said, never mind. For the hour that I must be betrayed, the thing that I wanted you to help me watch, this, this, this burden, I wanted you to help me just to pray with me and stay with me and just, I, I know you can't fix it for me, but at least you can be sensitive. God woke me up with that yesterday morning. When I got on my knees and got out the bed and started praying, he started talking to me about sensitivity. About sensitivity. This spirit will talk to you if you let it. This spirit will talk to you if you let it. He started talking to me about sensitivity. And he started talking to me about how, how, how the world Okay, yes, Lord. He said, backtrack. Yes, Lord. He said, it didn't just start here. It didn't just start here. If you read on up in the chapter, this was a spirit that set on the disciples. And that's why just because you go to church don't mean you possess the spirit. Just because you can get up and sing and you all are knowing it, because God will use a jackass. It doesn't mean that the spirit of God is in you. The spirit of God will sit up on anybody for the sake of his people. That's why when the prophet was headed in the wrong direction, God used a jackass and said, excuse me, you don't see this angel standing in the middle of this road and God told us not to go this way. Hello? The jackass wasn't filled with the spirit. The spirit of God sat up on him. And opened his eyes and called him to talk because the prophet didn't have nobody else around him to say, you're going to die if you disobey God. So God said to keep the prophet, to keep my prophet from going in the wrong direction, I'm going to have to open the mouth of this jackass. And I'm going to have to make this donkey speak out to this man so he can know what I'm talking to him. So I'm not talking about people being impressed because they have an anointing. 
I'm talking about, but do you have the spirit of God? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you possess it? Are you filled with it? Are you filled with it? Because there is a behavior system that comes with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. These are the same disciples that further up in the chapter, Jesus was sitting down. He had entered into this man's house to teach. And this woman came in. This woman of this sordid past. And she began to pour. She began to open up this expensive box of alabaster oil. And she began to, it was an alabaster box that was filled with expensive oil. And she began to anoint Jesus. And the first thing that happened, insensitivity, insensitivity. Because I'm going to tell you something, you have to watch it. When people that you are around, it's always just about them. Somebody said, well, prophet, did something happen in the last 24 hours to make you feel that way? No. But I'm going to get into my point. You have to be careful. When, when, when you subject your life to this all about them, it's all about them. And it's not about, it's not about the exchange of sensitivity. Are y'all hearing what I'm trying to say to you? Not sensitive. Here you got disciples. Now this man is getting ready to go to the cross. This man is getting ready to die on a cross. This man is constantly telling them that I'm going to be crucified. And my time is coming for the Lord to be glorified in me. And this woman comes in to anoint him. And regardless of whether or not, I mean, he prophesied and spoke prophetically and said, this was for, you know, my death and burial. And this woman is coming to do this and she will always be. But, but let's just say, let's just say that wasn't the point. Let's just say Jesus never said anything. They start clowning and becoming insensitive because he was getting oil. And they were only thinking about the finances, how expensive this would be. Are you letting her pour this oil out of? Do you know how expensive this is? Do you know this is a year's worth of salary? Do you realize what we, what we, what we could have did with this? Following Jesus, but don't have his spirit. Not have even been invited into the house had he not been there. Half of the places y'all went. You wouldn't have even been recognized had you not been with Jesus. Jesus was the star. Jesus was the one that was doing all the work. Jesus was the one that was casting out devils and healing the sick and feeding people and opening up blinded eyes. And because somebody want to pour some oil on him, insensitivity to what somebody else needs to fulfill the will of God becomes an indictment against Christianity. My God. My God. Like a selfish demon have jumped on us so bad until we're not sensitive to the things of God. So they start to complain about why they think the oil shouldn't have been spilled. And then you get on down when he go to the garden. It, did, it didn't surprise me. It didn't surprise me that they went to sleep. Because they had already displayed acts of insensitivity. Who am I talking to? Am I preaching something today? Let me just put my glasses on and look up on this screen. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Denise Mitchell. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Miss Dior. Yes. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. We have become so insensitive. They were already insensitive. So, I, so you know, that, them falling asleep. Them constantly falling asleep. And not staying awake. 
and not praying for a man that keeps saying, y'all, I'm dying. I feel depressed. I mean, I just having somebody there for you. I mean, I was supposed to have been in San Francisco. On my way to San Francisco, California. Caught my layover from Lake Charles yesterday. And found out that one of my friends, Karen Belton, lost her mother a year ago. And um, my other friend, Lynn Baker, said Karen is not doing well. She's really in a bad way because yesterday was her mom's birthday. And I, I, I spoke to Lynn. And so when I got to Lake Charles, it was like, let me get off this plane. Let me get off this plane and I'm going to change my reservation. And I'll just have to take a red eye on Thursday night. But I, but I felt something in my spirit. I can't explain it, but it was something in my spirit that the way, the only way I can explain it, I just felt my whole spirit saying, stop. Like, 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 stop. Like, we are in such automation in life that we are no longer sensitive to what somebody else is dealing with. And I felt like, okay, there's another flight. But my friend is hurting. Yeah, I'm Juanita Bynum. Yeah, I got to get to the airport. Yes, I'm going to California to a big women's conference. Yes, I do this and I do that and I do that. But my friend is hurting. You may not know her. She's not famous. She's not trying to be famous. She's just another person that just go to church and love God and lost her mother to an instant sickness that lasted a matter of a couple of days and her mother was gone. You don't know her. But she's my friend. And she was there when I needed her. She was there during a crucial time in my life. So no, no. The spirit of God then says, stop. We got people all around us. Your family, your friends that are dealing with things. But you too busy. You too busy to stop and say, Wait a minute, let me go check on them. Let me, let, no, because all we want to do, all we want to do, God forgive us, all we want to do is text everything. Everything is texting. Everything is texting. Because you don't have to show your real emotion in a text. You don't really have to convey your heart in a text. A person can't look in your eyes on a text and see that you care. Well, I sent you a text. You didn't get my text. Really? Really? That's the will of God. That's the will of God for the body of Christ. We have got so cold. Y'all, we won't, we won't even get nobody a ride home from church. I mean, I remember the day the pastor used to stand up and say, anybody going north, anybody going south? Forget about it. Ain't nobody taking nobody to church. Ain't nobody doing, ain't nobody trying to get nobody's kids to Sunday school. We just don't care. We just some of the most selfish people I have ever seen in this day and age. And I said, no. I said, no. I'm getting off this plane. And, and to do that, I had another experience last night. Well, I had to walk in some place that was very familiar to me. All the hotels were sold out. Every hotel, they couldn't find me a hotel room nowhere. And where I had to end up staying was some place that was very familiar to me, but very uncomfortable for me, extremely uncomfortable for my memories. But I had to keep telling myself, I gotta do this for Karen. Because she was there for me. And right now, she's hurting. She's this scripture right here in Matthew 26 and 37. I'm grieving. I feel like I'm dying. Can anybody just stay woke? 
Can somebody just pray for me? And I would be guilty like the disciples. Just going to sleep. And then waking up. Oh, is you all right? Is you, is, is you all right? I was checking on you. You're not checking on nobody. You fake. You're not checking on nobody sending them a text. You're not checking on anybody calling them two days after their trauma is over. You're not checking on anybody. Leaving them a voicemail and calling the number at a time when you know they can't even answer the phone because you don't want to be on the phone with anybody because you don't want to listen to nothing that they're going through because you're insensitive. That's what religion does. Who am I preaching to? Who am I preaching to? Insensitive. Even the other day, um, I got on my knees that morning. And you know, sometimes, y'all, sometimes I have to turn the inbox off. Sometimes I have to turn it off because it just get overwhelming for me. And so it was one of them, them two or three days that I was going through um, what, you know, stalkers be coming in my inbox and people saying all kind of crazy stuff. And, and um, some lady inboxing me, telling me she done took me to court because I left her with my, with my one-year-old child three years ago and I won't send her no money for the baby. And, and, she, and some subpoena ended up in my office from the court for me to come to court for child support. I mean, you, you, don't, you don't know the crazy stuff that I deal with being me. You, you have no idea. And so Prophet Major um, came in my inbox and he was just saying, hey, da, 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 da. And I was just saying, mm -mm, I, can't, I can't today. And I, I done forgot all of what I said, but I wasn't nasty, but I was, I was irritable. I wasn't as kind as I could have been, but I wasn't nasty. And it hurt his feelings. And I just said, well, you know, if I hurt your feelings, I don't, you know, I didn't mean no harm, blah, 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 blah. And left it and just went on. Went on. Yesterday morning, I got up and the Spirit of the Lord started talking to me about spiritual sensitivity. And I got on my knees and I started praying. And I just started praying to the Lord and just, you know, having my morning devotion. And, and I was there and just really asking the Lord to just guide me and, and you know, and, 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 and speak to my heart and lead me and guide me. And, da -da. and by the time I was almost finished praying, he brought that young man back up to me and he said, I want you to go and inbox him and apologize. It's Pastor Evans, I believe is his name. And I said, but I did apologize. He said, no, I'm talking about now being sensitive. Not just apologizing, but healing him. Because you can say you're sorry, but that don't heal nobody. You can say, well, forgive me if I hurt your feelings, but that didn't heal him. Now I want you to go back and say you're sorry and I want you to heal him. And so I had to get back on my inbox and say I'm sorry and feel free to inbox me because he's very kind. I mean, very nice. I mean, just nice. And he'd been my friend and we had been every now and then I'll comment on some of the stuff that he's doing and some of his projects and whatever. And, 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 and when I did that, the Lord said, Juanita, that's what I'm talking about, sensitivity. Sensitivity. And I was like, okay, God. All right. Then he says, get off the plane and go see about Karen. Sensitivity. Inconvenient. Inconvenient. Not convenient. Not convenient. And then that old pride. That old pride thing. I don't care if you... Uh, the first and the last astronaut. I don't care if you, I don't care who you are. If you don't carry the sensitivity of the heart of God, you will miss his will for your life. And you will miss his will for your life. Because if you're not sensitive, the spirit of the Lord moves us in and directs us into the promise 
by us being sensitive enough to hear God say, turn here, turn there, stop, don't do that, wait before you do that, do this over here, nope, don't pay that for that, there's something else, just be still, wait a few days, don't mess with that right now, pick up the phone right now and call, all of these things that I just described. Are, are, are moments to grasp a promise. They are moments. They are. They, they, they are. They are. They are uh, 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 attributes to how you lay hold of a promise. Now, now, if you're going to be sensitive to the Spirit of God, hearing Him say, "Don't touch that. Do that. Don't do that. Back up. Move that. Stay over here. Stay over there." But you can't be sensitive when God is saying, "See about them. Call. Do that. Handle this this way." There is no separate sensitivities. There's not a sensitivity to prosperity over here and an insensitivity to people over here. It doesn't work that way. It, 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 it's not a divide. It's not a divide because as prophet is buying them. I could have went on and said, you know what? He don't know me from a can of paint. And he just might as well get over it because you know what? I deal with a lot. But that's a soul. That's a soul that's being called to minister to I don't know how many thousands of people. And you're going to leave it like that? Just being insensitive? Because, because you think you have, you have done it the way you felt comfortable in doing it. And so that satisfies me. But we're not out to satisfy us. We're out for the will of God. You got parents on this page insensitive to your children. You work, 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 work. I go on somewhere. Because if I don't go to work, I, I, I can't get you them to the shoes that you want. So get on out of my face. Get on off my bed. Leave me alone. And you have to pursue to fix it. You have to pursue to fix it. You have to do your part. If they don't want to do their part, that's fine. But you got to do your part. You got to be sensitive. I don't care if people don't apologize to you. I don't care if they don't say sorry. I don't care if your family members don't say, you know what, I hurt you and I'm sorry. But when you see moments that you can be sensitive to a situation and you don't, you're not in the pursuit of the will of God. You're not in pursuit of it. You think you are, but you're not. And I know this is a real sticky word, like gum. Like when you get honey all over your hands. And every time you think you done wiped it off, you feel your hands rub against something else. There. Yeah, this is a sticky world today. It's a sticky world today. And God stopped me in a car to bring this word to you. You ever just pick up the phone and just call your kids and say, how you feeling? I'm just checking on you. Call your wife. How you doing? You all right? Because when you do, she going to say, what? Okay, what is it? What you want? Because you working up on something. Because I know you ain't this kind. What is it? And you're going to say, no, no, baby. I'll just call and say, ah, uh ah, -uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, you working on something. No, you calculating. Ain't that an awful shame? That when you finally get yourself to a point where you're sensitive to somebody, a friend to somebody, they look at you sideways and go, okay, what's up? Now, what's going on? Nothing. I just, I just thought I'd just come take you to lunch today. And you paying? Yeah, I'm paying. You want me to babysit your kids? No, girl, I just came to take you to lunch. You want, okay. Something is wrong. You want to move in with me? You, you, you want to bring your kids and move in? Okay, what? Well, sums up. Sums up because you ain't this nice. Isn't that something? How, that's how people feel like about us. Oh, you, uh, you ain't that nice. What? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Sums up. Sums up. You tell me to tell your kids you pick them up from school. Mama going to pick y'all up from school today. We ain't got to get on the bus. No, I'll be out there to get you at 3 o'clock. What? Where y'all want to eat at? Mama going to take y'all out today. We ain't got to eat pork and beans and hot dogs again for the fifth night. You taking us somewhere? <laughs> yeah, I'm just... 
they get to the table and they, they looking at each other and looking at you like, is she getting ready to tell us that her and dad are getting a divorce or something? Something is up. That's a shame, saints of God, that people have to look at us like that in order for them to embrace your sensitivity. It's always a catch to it. No, the catch now is that I love the Lord and I'm in pursuit of the will of God. I'm in pursuit of the will of God. And it is his will for us to be compassionate. He's moved by compassion. This is what gets the job done. This is what changes families. This is what changes friendships. This is what makes friendships stronger. This is what makes friendships with uh, girlfriends. Come on now, sisters. This is what makes that sisterhood stronger. Brothers, this is what makes that brotherhood stronger. When you operate in sensitivity without being asked. You see I'm on a donut. And I don't get paid for another three weeks. You can't just be sensitive and buy me a used tire. Y'all, come on now. What a man soweth that shall he also reap. You got people on this page wanting something that you've never sold. And mad because you don't have it. It's reciprocity. It goes around. It's what you sow is what you reap. The reason why I'm still alive. The reason why I'm still on my feet. The reason why I'm still standing. Because I sowed during my times of blessing. So when my time of persecution and tribulation came, I had seed in the ground that I can call up. And what I'm walking in right now is my reaping. I'm reaping what I sowed. You got people mad because, oh, she's still driving Range Rover. She's still that. I, I sold this. I sold cars. I sold houses. I did. I bought houses for people. Pay cash for them. I sold cars. I sold limousines. That's why I don't ever have a problem trying to find a ride somewhere if one of my cars are down. I sold this kind of thing. This is why I'm reaping it. You want your life to get better, but you want it to get better from a bankrupt spirit. Well, you're bankrupt in your sensitivity. And that's why during your time of stress, you sing the song, nobody's there for me. But who were you there for? Who can you get off this line and be there for right now? The little girl that I called yesterday, um, Jamie, Jamie Day is her name, Jamie Hilton Day. I don't know her from a can of paint. She started coming on the page. God changed her life. She said to me the other day, Dr. Bottom, I stopped listening to secular music. I stopped listening to looking at all them dirty movies and all that stuff. She said, God just washed me from this page. She said, he changed my life from this page. I started reading my Bible. I stopped doing all that old crazy stuff and all that drinking. Up. She said, I'm telling you, I, I, I just started following everything you said on this page. I don't go to church. I'm not church like that. But I started following this at three with me page. And it changed my life and changed my husband's life. And out of nowhere, 32 years old, he just went home to be with the Lord. Left this world. And I just picked up, I just went in the inbox and said, inbox me your number. I want to call you. I don't know her. She ain't famous. But I called her my friend. That's what y'all said. We lie on this page. Stop lying. That's why I had to start deleting people. I had to start deleting people off of my friend. Yeah, you may go to my friend's page and I'm not all the way up to 5,000 people. Yes, so what? Because I had to get rid of people that I know. I can't be your friend. You all up here with your legs wide open and all your titties hanging all out. And every time I see you on, on Facebook, you I, I don't never see no pictures of nothing you doing positive. All I ever see you doing is posing with your legs open and posing half naked and posing with all your breasts out and posing, licking another girl's jaw and licking this man's tongue. I, I, you're not my friend. You not my friend. I can't, you can't be my friend. You can't be my friend. 
But if I've called you my friend and I see on there you it's your birthday, how do I just pass your page up and don't say happy birthday? If I call you my friend and I see where your daddy done died, how do I not just stop and say, sis, I'm praying for you? I see where you've lost a child, the gun violence. I'm so sorry about that. I'm praying for you. I'm lifting you up in prayer. And I called Jamie. And she said, you will never know what this did for me. She said, because I'm in shock and disbelief. I said, well, you know what? I love you and I'm praying for you. And I just took the time. People. I didn't have the time. But I took the time. To stop and pray for her. I got up today and I felt in my spirit. I called her. I said, Jamie, I feel led that you need to put up a GoFundMe page. To help you with the funeral. Because she was telling me how they didn't have all the money to help bury him and I said put up a GoFundMe page I said I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna sew and she said Dr. Bonham I, you know I, 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 I'm I, not on the phone with you for that I said I know it's not you it's me I said but we bumblebees on this page and we gonna help you I said do it because I'm asking you to do it she didn't want to do that but I'm like we Christians are we Christians? Then take the sign down. Don't be having a yellow arch up outside your restaurant time of you McDonald's and you don't sell cheeseburgers. You McDonald's and you don't have the McDonald's fries? There's not a picture of Ronald McDonald nowhere in this restaurant? Then take the sign down. People, take the sign down. Well, I wonder what she's going to do with that money. None of your business. Take the sign down. Either we're going to be sensitive to each other or we're not. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is not the IRS. This is not the IRS. She just lost her husband. She don't know me. I don't know her. She don't know y'all. But her name is Jamie Hilton Day. And she got a GoFundMe page up. And I don't care if it ain't but $5. We. When I heard how overwhelmed she was with me calling her. That thing did something to me. When I heard Prophet Evans. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at him. Inbox me back saying to me, you will never know today what this inbox did for me today. Then God just start turning that thing up with me. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not on this page to be fake. I'm not on this page to be giving you a whole bunch of scriptures and a whole bunch of who shot John and, 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 and none of it applies to me. All of it applies to me. All of it applies to me first. I'm on this page to say to us, step it up. Step it up. Step up sensitivity to the things of God and the people of God or take your sign down. Call yourself something else, but don't say you're Christian because you're not. Because you're not. Then when they came to get Jesus, when they came to get Jesus, they all pulling out all sorts trying to cut people's ears off. No, you know what? Let me put the man's ear back on. Because when I needed y'all. Was in that garden. Where I needed y'all. Was in Gethsemane. I, 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 I needed somebody to just feel what I was feeling. I knew I got to do this. I, I knew I had to do this. But I just needed somebody to feel me for a minute. 